Welcome everybody to the Slim Chance Stay at Home Circus School. Yes, right in your very own living room. It's good to see you all. Nice to see you. Uh, oh, and you. Glad you can make it. And you. And you. And you. Oh, you. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's been a long time. Oh, welcome, welcome. All right. Well, right here in your own living room, we're going to have circus every day. Lots of fun activities, things that you can make, things that you can learn from tutorials. We're going to put any kind of fun things that you want to learn. So all you have to do is write us a comment of another thing that you want to learn and we can put something up there. And we'll find the best things that there are available on the internet, which is all the things. So let's all learn together while we're at home because now you have more time than ever to be amazing at whatever you want to do. So you can learn a new language, you know, you can write that novel, you can paint a picture, and you can become the best juggler that you ever could possibly be. All right, today we're going to have a juggling lesson, but if you are in the Bay Area, uh, we have a tool, we have a circus um, prop lending library. I've got much equipment that I teach with every day, well, did teach with every day, and that's all available for people to use. So if you send me a message, uh, we can allow you to use some, a unicycle or something to juggle, um, any of those things. If you're in the Bay Area, just go ahead and shoot us a line and we will get you what you need so you can practice. And those of you who are not in the area who cannot do that, and if that's not an option, the other option is things you have around the house that you can actually juggle. So there's lots of things in your very own kitchen that can be used for your juggling props. These are really great ones. These are just your average bags for produce. And remember, if, um, if really small children are using them, make sure they're being supervised when they're playing with plastic bags. And all of you know, do not put plastic bags over your head. And if you don't know that, now you know. Don't put plastic bags over your head. Okay, but with these, these are just like the scarves. For those of, a, uh, those of you who've been in my classes, you know how to juggle the scarves, or at least understand. And just go one at a time. Just bring it up to the height that it needs to be, and voila. You have juggling things at home. Ta-da! All right. After you've used your bags, then you can go ahead and move on to something new, like socks. Yes. If you have socks that are similar in size, it helps. You make them into a nice little ball. Just roll them together, nice and tight, just like so. Bada boom, bada bing, and you've got a wonderful juggling ball right there. See that? And then you can get two others that are similar. Oh. And voila. Oh. And you keep picking them up <laughs> and you'll get better with juggling them. Right? These aren't the same. There we go. Sock juggling at its finest. Yes, make sure you use clean socks, not the dirty socks. Clean <laughs> socks. Trust me, it makes a difference. It'll make you happier. All right. And now, other things to use at home. If you're lucky enough to have a fruit tree around, or happen to have some produce that you can juggle. Uh, remember, if you juggle, say, some oranges, you're probably going to have to make yourself some orange juice later on. And then 
you have a great thing to juggle all the time, as long as you have some oranges. Remember, always keep your eyes up on the top of the pattern as you're juggling. And it's always a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so here's the how-to part of the produce bag. Okay, so with all juggling, you practice with one item. You start, find the path that it wants to go, and throw it from one hand to the next. If some things are a little more unwieldy, you can find out the path that they want to take. So you start with that one thing, and you get a really good path. Try and make it pretty much the same path every time, although some things have a mind of their own. One item. And then with two, it's the timing of juggling is the most important part. Putting it, putting one up in the air to the place where you want it to be, at its peak, you throw the other one to a similar peak on the other side. You see? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And with three, it's going to be a similar timing. You'll have one in your scissor grip. You see? It's a little alligator scissor grip there. The other one in the palm of that hand. Whatever your lead hand is. Uh, mine happens to be my right, because I'm right-handed. If I was left-handed, it would be in my left. That would be my lead hand to start with, because that's my stronger. So, I start with the one, and I go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. And that is how you juggle produce bags. Okay, and now with oranges, you would learn the same way. You would start with one, make sure it's the same throw with each hand. Want them all to reach the same height. You see that? Always the same height. And it just drops into your hand, so you don't have to look at your hand when it's actually landing there. You just look in the air and make sure your hand is where it needs to be. And with two, it's the same. It's one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two. And with the third one, same, whatever your lead hand is, you would have two. And that would be your first one and your third one. One, two, 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 one, two. And that is how you juggle oranges. And thank you for coming to Slim Chances Circus School today, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. You all did a great job. Okay, now I need you all to practice for tomorrow.